Hey, welcome Washington football fans. Hey, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I try to put out videos every day of the week, during the week, if possible, maybe sometimes not on Wednesdays, but um, I do try to put out a lot of content. So you're going to want to subscribe in order to keep up with all of the content. With that said, let's get into today's video. So as you know, the Washington football team is heading into tonight's game at four and six. And yesterday was very helpful for for uh, Washington football. The Panthers, as we all know, we beat them last week. The Panthers held that last seventh uh, position in the playoffs, uh, the seventh seed. And of course, Washington beat them last week. Well, Carolina lost yesterday, which means a win tonight will put the Washington football team into that seventh spot. Why? Well, not only because the Panthers lost and because we beat them, but the Philadelphia Eagles also lost yesterday. So right now it's putting Washington in a great position to hold on to that final playoff spot. Now we've got some more, we've got plenty of more football to go. So let's not get too involved with playoffs just yet. But knowing that the Washington football team has gotten themselves, believe it or not, back into the playoff race is just it's mind blowing, honestly. So anyway, yeah, they're they're coming into tonight's game against the LC Hawks, four and six. A win tonight will make them five and six, and then they'll head uh, into a game against the Raiders next Sunday. And Raiders haven't been playing that well. So who knows what's going to happen. They did beat the Dallas Cowboys, which we were very happy of. So um, that being said, um, Seattle. Now, Seattle, of course, anytime you have Russell Wilson healthy with Seattle, they're always going to be in a position to win football games. But for the most part, the Seattle Seahawks have been struggling quite a bit this year. As you all know, Russ had that uh, broken thumb, I believe it was, and he was out for several games. Uh, came back against the, the Packers last week. Did not look very well at all. Um, uh, got a lot of pressure to him as well, but, you know, they, they couldn't even score any points. Uh, they got blown out 17 to nothing against the Packers. Now, <laughs> believe it or not, the Washington football team is, I believe, last time I heard they were like a two-point favorite in tonight's game. So how <laughs> sounds bad, but how often do you hear about the Washington football team being favorites in a game? All right. It just, it really doesn't happen very often. So um, I don't know if that's going to be a good omen or a bad omen to us. I'm hoping it's a good omen, but all right. So keys to, the, to tonight's game, keys to victory, if you will, uh, for the Washington football team. Number one, we need to keep Russell Wilson off the field which means that we need long, methodical, drawn-out uh, drives that hopefully end in points. Uh, but we need to get, keep Russell Wilson off the field because uh, the more that he stays off the field, rustier he's going to get. It's going to be cold. Um, he's just not going to play as well. He's probably going to push because he knows that opportunities are few and far between. So that's what you're going to have to do to put pressure on on Russell Wilson to simply keep him off of the field. This seemed to work against Tom Brady, as we all know. I mean, that last drive, which was like a 10 plus minute drive that ended in a touchdown. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't ask for a more perfect uh, drive and a more perfect ending to that football game. And that is something that Washington will need to try to do. Long, drawn out, methodical drives that end in scores. And if Washington can do that, keep Russell Wilson off the field, it's going to give Washington that much more of an opportunity to win this football game. Um, point number two is Heineke needs to continue playing the football that he has played in the last couple of games, which means mistake-free football. All right, you know, he has not turned the football over. I think he's had a quarterback rating of like 71.9, uh, which is really good. Um he needs to distribute the ball out to his stars. You know, Terry McLaurin looks like Logan Thomas is probably going to be back tonight. That's going to be a, a big boost in the offense. Um, 
you know, he's going to have to get the ball out to guys like Cam Sims, Adam Humphreys, DeAndre Carter, um, and there's a chance that maybe Curtis Samuel, maybe he plays tonight. So uh, Taylor Heineke is going to have plenty of weapons, I feel like. It's just that he's going to have to play mistake-free football. He, he's got to continue to do that. I know it's a little bit more difficult because it's a Monday night football game. You're in the national spotlight. But keep in mind, he played really well against uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year in the playoffs. And he played pretty well against the Giants on Monday night football. So, point is, you know, I, I feel like as long as there's not the issue with you know, the nerves of playing against the national crowd, Taylor Heineke should be okay. Uh, three, this kind of goes along with Taylor Heineke, but it goes along with Antonio Gibson more than anything else. No turnovers. We cannot have fumbles. Can't have interceptions. We have got to play mistake-free football. And if you can hold on to the football and, like I said, have these long, drawn-out drives that end in scores, you're going to be okay. Antonio Gibson's got to learn you can't you can't be loose with the football. You know, even when he came back last week after that fumble and he played really well, he he ran angry, he ran hard. He still isn't holding that football the way he should. And again, you know he's he's converting from a wide receiver to a running back. So you know he just hasn't probably had. Um, you know, the time to, to, or the effort to kind of deprogram how he carries the football, because let's face it, wide receivers do tend to carry the football a different way than what running backs will. So that's something he's going to have to work on. If he can fix that issue, he's going to be just fine. He's going to be great, but we have got to have zero turnovers in this game. That's, that's just all it is to it. You turn the football over, you give Russell Wilson more opportunities, he is going to beat you. I don't care what what year Seattle Seahawks, the Seattle Seahawks is having, they will beat you if you give them more opportunities than none. Um, the the fourth point I want to make is, you know, we got to pressure Russell Wilson when he's in there. We have got to pressure him now. We can't allow him to kind of scramble out to the sides. But unfortunately, our pass rush is probably not going to come from the edges uh, since, of course, you know, Chase Young, Montez Sweat being out. It's going to come from up the middle with Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, uh, Matt um, Ioannidis. So, you know, we're going to have to rely on those guys to get pressure to Russell Wilson, but we are going to hope that our ends um, will help to at least contain Wilson in the pocket. Because if you can contain him in the pocket, you can collapse the pocket, you can get to Wilson, but you can't allow him to to scramble out. Because when he starts scrambling out to the, the sides there, he can make some plays. So you've got to be able to contain Russell Wilson. You've got to put pressure on him, and you've got to get him down for sacks. Uh, the fifth one, and this again, this kind of goes along with pressuring Russell Wilson. You cannot give up the big play. Every single game, the Washington football team has given up the big play. This has got to stop. You know, the secondary does seem like it's playing better. And right now, the secondary is going to have to step up and be the leaders of this defense, if not the entire team. So they got to do that by shutting down the big plays. They got to do that by being able to communicate better with each other. It seems like communication for the most part has gotten better, but there there are still glaring, obvious mistakes and mistakes that often lead to huge plays for the other team. So we have got to make sure that these mistakes get corrected. We can't allow for the big play from Russell Wilson. And you know, even if even if the football team has to play way off, you know. Uh, and they have. I, I have seen the corners playing way off, which I will admit kind of gets under my skin as well because I think sometimes they play too far off and they allow for much too easy of a, a pass reception. But, you know, that's all in fear of them not wanting to give up the big plays. But they're going to have to work on not giving up the big plays tonight 
Got to pressure Russell Wilson up, up the middle, contain him in the pocket, but they cannot allow him to also stand back there and make long bombs down the field for huge chunks or touchdowns. So uh, that is something that Washington is going, if they can't do anything else, that is one thing they have to do is to make sure they don't give up the big play. Uh, finally, Scott Turner needs to call a good game. Good game. Uh, it just needs to. He, he seemed like he got into the groove uh, the last couple of weeks, of course. He needs to continue that. Um, you know, there are times where he plays a pretty decent game, and then there are other times where he puts in plays that are, you know, I consider too cute. And it's like, why are you doing that? So, you know, he has got to be able to, um, you know, call a good game, call a game in which the offense methodically goes up and down the field. Uh, time of possession is important. I think as you progress throughout the end of the season, you're going to see that time of possession is what is going to be a reflection on why the Washington football team wins their games or loses their games. Time of possession. If they have more time of possession than the other team, chances are they are probably winning that football game. And so they got to keep up with that. And that, a lot of that falls on Scott Turner as well, you know, not to get too cute, uh, to stick with a, a good, successful running game. Um, take a shots when he needs to, but he needs to put, to, put together game plans that work that um, work against the defense's weaknesses, uh, attacks those weaknesses, but as well as uh, plays that um, can be successful against their strengths as well. So um, comes down to that. It really comes down to a complete football game. And that's something that I think is the reason why Washington has won the last two games. They have played complete games from start to finish. They need to continue to do that. Uh, you know, one game you feel like, okay, they had one pretty decent game. Two games you start to feel like, okay, maybe there's a habit forming. Maybe they have started to uh, turn over a new leaf. If they play the same way tonight and they actually come away with a win, we're going to say, yes, things are definitely different. Different in a good way. Um, but, yeah. So, that's it, folks. I mean... Washington wins tonight. They're five and six. They're they're holding that last playoff spot. They're back in the thick of the division race because Dallas lost. Uh, you know, Philadelphia lost, and so that's that's putting Washington closer, it's putting them closer. Now, you know, we will have some um, health issues. Sam Cosme and uh, Taylor Larson, both guys not playing tonight because of their injuries. So the offensive line, next man up. You're going to have to step up. You're going to have to protect. Uh, Taylor Heineke, you're going to have to continue to open up those running lanes for uh, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, Jarrett Patterson. You got to be able to continue to just realize that, hey, it doesn't matter who's in there. We got to play it. We got to give it our all. Um, but I think overall, Washington's sitting in a very good opportunity tonight. So um, it's going to be great to see them play. Um, I'm excited. I hope that we have a W, uh, and I hope that tomorrow's video is going to be a great video. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, share it with other football fans if you don't mind. And if you're really enjoying this channel, please consider subscribing. Why not? Um, I could use your subscriptions. I can use your views. Um, and I just enjoy talking with other Washington football fans. Hey, I enjoy talking to other football fans in general. So it doesn't matter if you're a Washington football fan or not, subscribe. Um, and if you really want to support this channel, I do have a Patreon link. And um, feel free to head over to Patreon, support me any way you can. Anything you do will be much, much appreciative. Having said all that, let's go Washington football team. Let's go Maniacs. Hell and all that stuff, and I will see you in the next one.